This is the Samsung Galaxy S23 disassembly. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and follow me on Twitter so you'll be notified once I upload a new video. And if you need any tools, there are links in the description. First, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Here's a better look at that. Now, heat needs to be applied to the back plate to loosen up the adhesive underneath, and then a plastic pry tool can be used to pry the back plate off. Here's a look at the glass back plate. The glass camera lens covers can be replaced by applying heat and prying them off. So you wouldn't need to remove the back glass to replace these covers. Also, if you look closely on the adhesive around the back plate, we can see some of the sand that adhesive prevented from getting inside of the foam during the durability test. There are 20 Phillips screws that need to be removed. The flex cable for the NFC antenna and wireless charging coil needs to be disconnected from the main board. The NFC antenna is located on top and the wireless charging coil is located below it. And there's graphite film to help transfer heat. Here's a look at the other side. The battery cable cannot be disconnected, followed by the rest of the flex cables. Here's a better look at the top speaker. There's also an antenna board on the top corner. Taking a closer look at the filter over the speaker, we can see that this filter also prevented some of the sand from getting in. This top speaker also has the little white foam balls, which make the speaker sound larger than it actually is. The main board is a sandwich dual layer board. Taking a closer look at the main board, there's a 12 megapixel ultra wide lens, a 50 megapixel wide, and a 10 megapixel telephoto lens. The wide and telephoto lens are the only ones with OIS or optical image stabilization. There's a secondary microphone on top, and the LED flash is located below it. The proximity sensor is located on the other side, and the camera connectors can be disconnected by just popping them off. There's also a graphite pad to help transfer heat over the back shield. Once that's peeled back, we can see thermal paste on top of the RAM, which is seated over the processor. Here's a better look with the thermal paste removed. The 12 megapixel front facing camera is glued in place with a cure in place gasket. So if you need to replace that, you'd have to use an X-Acto knife or a razor blade to gently cut the seal around the camera and pull it out. Here's a look at the bottom speaker assembly. The bottom speaker also has the little white foam balls, which make the speaker sound larger than it actually is. And the linear haptic feedback or vibrator motor is located behind the speaker in the speaker assembly. This flex cable connects the main board to the screen, and these two connect the main board to the subboard. So if you need to replace the screen, you'd have to remove the back plate, the screws on the bottom speaker assembly, and remove the speaker assembly itself, giving you access to the flex cable for the screen, at which point you could disconnect it, heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath, pry the old screen off, apply new adhesive and reapply the new screen, making sure you reconnect the flex cable and reassemble the phone. Now if you wanted, you could also replace the screen from the front and you don't have to take the back apart. You just have to apply heat and pry the old screen off, being careful to disconnect the flex cable without tearing it. And then you'd have to carefully reapply the new screen, making sure you align it perfectly. So when you sit it down in place and push it down, it reconnects with the flex cable. In my opinion, it's a little more difficult doing it that way. Because if you happen to misalign it or not put it in properly, you're gonna have to pry that screen back off, in which you can possibly damage that screen, and you'd also have to reapply new adhesive again. There are three Phillips screws holding down the subboard. The primary microphone is located over here. The SIM reader is located on the other side, as well as the charger port which has a red rubber gasket around it. 
To remove the battery, there's an adhesive pull pouch provided to help you pry the battery off. Here's a better look at the 3,900 milliamp hour battery. Once the battery is removed, we can see the copper vapor chamber which runs underneath the battery and the motherboard. The flex cable for the power button and volume key is located here, so if you needed to replace that you'd have to gently peel it off and lift up and pull out the metal bracket from the frame. For the repairability score, I give this phone a 9 out of 10. Now it's time to reassemble the phone. Once everything's back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply the backplate. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.